Hello, Texas readers. My name is Kelly Barnhill. I am the author of The Girl Who Drank the Moon. Uh, this is my office where I wrote my book. Um, and this is my dog, Sirius Black, who did not help at all, but he really wanted to sit on my lap right now. Um, I have been asked to answer some questions. And um, so let's do that, shall we? Question number one. Your book reads like a beautiful fairy tale. Thanks, guys. That's a really nice thing to say. What are your favorite fairy tales and why? That's a really good question. I am a big fairy tale reader. I've written a lot about um, my experience being a fairy tale reader, and I've been a fairy tale reader since I was a kid. When I was your age, when I was a kid, my very, very favorite collection of fairy tales was this one. It's called The Violet Fairy Book. Hi. Hi. Are you helping? Not really. Um, it's called The Violet Fairy Book. It's by Andrew Lang. And it uh, it's part of a series of uh, lots and lots of fairy tale collections. And all of the stories come from all around the world. And in it, it has um, one of my favorite um, fairy tales of all time that's called um, The Grateful Prince, where a lot of the um, fairy tale conventions is are kind of... Um, turned on their head. And I like it when things happen that you don't quite expect. Um, so question number two, magic is an important part of your book. Where can people find magic now? Literally everywhere. Literally everywhere, I think. Uh, the world that we live in is wondrous and strange and inexplicable sometimes. And, um, and I do think that the that the line from Hamlet is really true that there are more things in heaven and earth Horatio than are writ in your philosophy. I think that um, I think that magic is everywhere. I think it's everywhere you look actually. Question three. Your book has a few different stories woven together. How do you create all of these details and characters? So all of my books, I once I get an idea for a story, and usually it starts out as either an image or a little like knot of text that I find pleasing, or a notion, or um, a particular character, or whatever. Um, uh, in all of those cases, I have to think about a book for a really long time before I can actually start writing it. So, and usually about two years and sometimes even longer. So the, by the time I actually sit down to write, I have been living with these characters in my head and in my imagination for a really long time. So I know them extremely well. Um, and so uh, it's it's why I have these different threads, uh, narratives from each of the particular characters that all like come weaving together um, I, and uh, whether they want to or not. Um, it's because I've been living with them for so very, very long. Chapter four, the sorrow eater is a unique character. Do you think there are people like this around us? What can we do to stop or help them? Well, yeah, I do think that. Um, here's a, here's the thing about human emotion. Uh, human emotion has um, weight and mass and gravity. It is palpable in a room. And we've all experienced that, right? We've all experienced uh, walking into a room where everybody in that room is really sad for some reason that we don't know. But right away, we start to feel sad too, right? As soon as we walk in, we can feel that sorrow. Same as if we walk into a room and everybody's happy for a reason that we don't know. And we find ourselves inexplicably happy. This happens actually because of a science reason. Um, uh, uh, we, have a we have these structures in our brains uh, called mirror neurons that this is the reason why human beings have empathy. Um, when we um, uh, witness another person having an emotion, we don't just witness it, we feel it too. And the reason why we feel it is because of these structures in our brains. Um, and and so, so I do think that there are people in the world who manipulate emotions for their own gain. I think that that is true. I wish that it wasn't. And I think that the way that we guard against that is by trusting in our own sense of empathy, um, that we, um, we are more when we allow ourselves to be more, um, we allow ourselves to connect ourselves um, fully and truly to the people around us. So that's what I think. Um, question five, what advice would you give to our young 
authors and illustrators as they learn to improve your skills? Well, first of all, read and look at art and write all the time and draw all the time. You get better by doing things, right? But also, I would, um, I would say honor what you do honor what you do. Human beings have been telling stories through words and pictures since since we first could make words and pictures. It is part of who we are. It is part of how our brains are wired. We are stories. We are stories. We think in stories. We remember in stories. We dream in stories. We plan for the future in stories. We um, explain things around us in stories. And we make sense of the world around us. We, we um, uh, uh, make sense of, the, of everything around us through stories. So stories are integral to how we experience the world. Um, it is our most human activity and it connects us to people in a very real, real way because um, stories are the, pro the process of stories is an act of radical empathy where we um, uh, fully immerse ourselves in the point of view and the, um, uh, the life experience of another person right so your story matters your art matters so it's important to approach it with a sense of honor and trust and deep joy. And deep joy is what I feel just knowing that you're doing this, just knowing that you're participating in these stories, just knowing that you're going back to this process of story making once again and making it new. So thank you. Thank you for taking the time to read my book. Thank you for taking the time to read all of these books and good luck for the coming year. Thanks guys.